A very good Wednesday morning to you. It is Queen's Wednesday here on Why in the Morning. And you are watching Y254 channel. Why in the Morning runs every day from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And today is Queen's Wednesday. And in Queen's Wednesday, we have a very, very important segment, which we call Strength of a Woman. And with me in studio today, I have an activist against sexual violence because she has herself has been under that particular circumstance not once but twice and she's here in studio today with us to give us her story she goes by the name of Elsia Koth and I will allow her to say good morning to you good morning mm -hmm. yes I'm Elsia Koth mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm an activist and a student mm -hmm. yeah so we'd like to understand, um, you've been a victim of uh, sexual violence yourself. Yes. And this has happened, the, both cases have happened between such a short period of time. Like the first case and the second case, there's no big time, yes. time gap. So we'd like to understand the story. You're a student of uh, the University of USIU, yes. Uni United States International, International University. University. Goodness, I don't even know the whole name and then my sister goes there. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we'd like to understand the first time this happened, I'm sure people at home are curious, what were the circumstances surrounding it and what action was taken? Well, the first time it happened, the first thing I did was first go to hospital because, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't want to get pregnant to get any diseases mm -hmm. and I went to the police station. Mm -hmm. But the feedback I got from them was very vile. I didn't go back. Mm -hmm. to pursue the um the cases or anything the feedback was very vile like um the cops were dealing with me like they didn't want to help me mm -hmm. it's like i was forcing them to do their work uh -huh. yeah so i got really discouraged and i didn't go back okay 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 let's 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 uh run back a little bit this particular circumstance this party or what have you how many were you they said they were witnesses where mm -hmm. was this was there was there um uh, drugs or alcohol involved what was the circumstances in which this happened and wh and if at all p they were witnesses as you say why didn't they do anything we'd like to understand what happened there exactly it was a house party yeah? mm -hmm. who are drinking and everything mm -hmm. and then in the morning I was really tired so mm -hmm. I said let me take a nap uh, in the sitting room because mm -hmm. I didn't want to walk okay the person's house is really close to my house mm -hmm. and I didn't want to walk in the middle of the night to go to my house so I said let me nap yes and that's when it happened and the people who also asleep in the sitting room mm -hmm. so when I woke up he was on top of me and his friend was like petting me it's like he was trying to keep me silent or maybe he was hoping that he would go next after his friend was done. So, yeah, there were people in the living room, basically. Oh, my goodness. Can you take us through what, what, what was going on in your mind at that particular moment? I just stormed out of the house because I was in disbelief. Mm -hmm. I just stormed out of the house. Mm -hmm. And when I came back, okay, I to went and told my friends about the story. Mm -hmm. So when we went back to confront the guy, he claimed he didn't remember anything. Mm -hmm. And... I know he remembers because when we went the second time after that, he was on his knees begging for forgiveness and everything. Ah. Then when we involved the cops, that's when he said he had never seen me before. Oh, He's so so when you went to report him, now he suddenly got amnesia again. Yes, that remember. all of a sudden he doesn't know what happened. So now that the police have, have kind of slept on this case, what action have you taken to make sure that you get justice? Now, after the second incident, now then for this year, mm -hmm. um, I aired it on social media and... Wait, so the first, in before we go to the second one, uh -huh. the first incident, what did you do uh, with, with between that period of time when the, when the police didn't look like they were willing to respond? I just got counseling. Counseling? Yeah, because you know sometimes like when, some, it's like when you're forcing someone to help you and they don't want to help you, you lose... Um, you lose sight, like, like you're just like, it's okay, let it be. And then you know it's a very sensitive thing. You expect someone at least to understand you and for you to convince someone that you've gone through something that bad is, mm -hmm. you know, like it's really heartbreaking. Okay, let me understand also the side effects. Well, you did mention that you told your friends what had happened. Mm -hmm. did, the, did, did, did the members of the school start treating you any differently? What response did the USIU students have themselves when this story came out? Negative and positive. Mm -hmm. I'd say positive because, okay, just let's say 80% positive because mm -hmm. I had so much support from people telling me that they'd help, um, they'd be there for me and whatnot. Like people are very encouraging. Mm -hmm. But the negative now was the lashing out. People mm -hmm. would say I'm lying and whatnot or I'm doing this to gain fame mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, who wakes up in the morning and lies that they got raped, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, those negative and positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you deal with it personally? Like aside from the counseling, how did you deal with? Because you go, you still go to the school, right? Yes. So how did you take it uh, day at at a time? What kept you going every morning? Wearing a mask. 
a mask. Not literally, uh -huh. <laughs> but like just acting like everything is okay. Because mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, like I told you, after I shared, I got so many other people confessing about what they went through. Okay. So I can't be that person out there who looks like she's weak or mm -hmm. what. I have to put on a mask and you know what? Yeah. Carry on with life and whatnot. Because life mm -hmm. doesn't end there. Mm -hmm. Yes, people get suicidal, people get depressed, people go through all these kind of uh, side effects, but I was just like, you know what? Let me just take it as it is. What are you studying in USIU, by the way? International relations and mm -hmm. psychology. Mm -hmm. yeah. International relations and psychology. Psychology. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So um, let's go now to the second time this happened. Now, the second time, it was a long-term friend. I've known him from class two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, when it happened, I got PT you know PTSD, right? After mm -hmm. you go through something very traumatic, you yeah. can relieve the um, the scenario, right? Mm -hmm. So everything came back to me. I felt like what happened during the first time was happening. Okay, yes, it was happening, but like it brought back all the emotions that were involved during the first. So um, you had nightmares and what have you? Flashbacks. Like it's really hard sometimes. You can even get confused and not able to distinguish what's real and what's going on in your head. Did you take any medication for that? Yes, antidepressants mm -hmm. and mood stabilizers, uh -huh. everything. Okay, so let's roll back to this long-term friend of yours who showed up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What happened? What were the circumstances? Um, we were from the club, mm -hmm. him, me, and two other girls. Mm -hmm. So he had a class at 9 a.m. in the morning because, you know, he live around school. Mm -hmm. So he asked me to house him so that he can go to class on time because he lives very far from school. I was like, okay, because... He's been to my house before, so it's not something like, it's not something new. But mm -hmm. we've never had any kind of relations. Mm -hmm. So I decided to sleep because mm -hmm. I wanted to keep on drinking. I was really tired. There was alcohol in the house. I was like, okay, you guys want to keep on drinking? It's fine. Mm -hmm. So I decided to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's common sense the girls sleep in the bedroom because yes. I had an extra mattress. I put it out for him in the living room and told him, yeah, now you can rest there. Okay. So I wore my pajamas. I was actually very decently dressed. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel him removing the clothes at all what i felt was the penetration mm -hmm. and yeah that's when i started screaming in the house and kicked him out of the house mm -hmm. then um i talked to my best friend about the story everything and we agreed let's just share this story online so did you go to the police immediately after i went to hospital first okay yeah that's mm -hmm. always like the first thing i'm i'm just so scared of you know you never know right mm. so yeah i went to hospital and then i went to the police now this time when i went to the police i had a feeling that they treat me how they treated me the first time but thank god they didn't mm -hmm. and i the first time it was actually a male officer who was dealing with my case and the second time it was a female officer yeah. she really tried to sympathize with me because apparently she's dealt with other cases like this before that's mm -hmm. what she told me mm -hmm. so yes um we did um i mean i went to hospital brought for them the prc form and everything mm -hmm. wrote my statement asked the witnesses to come and write now here's what the twisted part is the girl who knows the both of us because the other girl i didn't know her it was the friend of the girl who i know mm -hmm. refused to write a statement mm -hmm. saying that she doesn't want to get him expelled she doesn't want him to i don't know like he, she doesn't want to tarnish his name and then she's scared of being involved with the police because mm -hmm. apparently I don't know she just doesn't want the police involved in her life mm -hmm. and then she, she tells me that since I've known him for a very long time mm -hmm. I should just forgive him and move on she told you to forgive him and move yeah, on yeah I even have evidence like messages and everything phone records mm -hmm. yeah Okay, there's something you mentioned about a male officer dealing with it the first time and he, di and he sort of kind of shoved it down. So we'd like to understand what are some of the stereotypes that you encountered from, from the police now themselves uh, mm -hmm. when you came and they said, ah, yes. For instance, let's say if someone gets raped when they're from, okay, let's say if my scenario was um, I go to the police station dressed in a certain kind of way, mm -hmm. you'd hear things like, what do you expect when you dress like that? Or what do you expect when you drink? What do you expect when you watch? You know, like victimization. Yes. It's actually real. Mm -hmm. I feel like police officers as well as the medics mm -hmm. should be taught how to deal with victims. You can't be blaming them and they're coming to you for help. Yeah. You know, that's mm -hmm. not how you treat people. It's mm -hmm. the same way in school. If a student cannot understand something, you don't start telling them that's because your IQ is low or what. No, yeah. you meet them halfway and try and understand, you know. Mm. Yeah. So they actually told you that it's your fault. Yeah. Most of half and th and hence they didn't follow up because they had the story involved partying. Oh, so they were like, yeah, what do you expect when you go and drink like that? And mind you, it's not like I was in a state where I was drunk or blacked out. Mm -hmm. I was actually conscious of everything that was happening. Mm -hmm. So, 
I just lost courage. I was like, you know what? It's fine. That no was for the first case. So for the first case, those boys are free. He was released on bail. Mm-hmm. He got arrested. Then, um, yeah, he was released on bail. His pa- pa- actually, his father tried to talk to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether he was trying to bribe me, but mm-hmm. I just ignored. You ignored? Yeah, because so I mean, how does your son tell the officers he's never seen me? Yeah. And I was at his house and he was busy on his knees begging me for forgiveness, you know? Mm. Yeah. What about the second time? Did the perpetrators of the second time meet any consequences? Him, he didn't even get arrested as a first. I don't even understand why. Because mm-hmm. again, like I told you, that girl refused to give her statements mm-hmm. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's still an ongoing case mm-hmm. and I'm not going to stop until I get what I want. Okay, so let me understand uh, the reaction from your parents and your relatives and your, f- and your friends. What did your parents do about this? What was their response? They were sympathetic. Mm-hmm. To some extent, they actually blamed themselves. They mm-hmm. were like, if you were still living at home, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it wouldn't have happened. But that's now what I think is... Um, is a problem when it comes to things like rape because mm-hmm. you know you can't start victimizing and saying if this scenario was different this would have happened the yeah. thing is if a rapist is a rapist then mm-hmm. rape whether it's in an open place in an enclosed place whether you're drunk you're sober you're a child you're old mm-hmm. it doesn't matter the circumstance yeah. yeah so did you finally move back home or you're still boarding in school i'm still staying especially like our own own house Okay, now that yeah. you've decided to become an activist, what mm-hmm. do you feel are some of the gaps and you've had uh, a, a scenario where you've not received justice exactly? What actions have you taken? Have you formed any groups? Yes. Uh-huh. Tell us about that. Now what happened, like I told you after the second time, I actually shared my story openly on social media mm-hmm. and it blew up. Everyone was sharing back. So I said because there's this number of victims and there are people who I even know, I didn't know they'd been through such things. Mm. I opened up a WhatsApp group Mm-hmm. And then um, I've been partnering up with GVRC. Mm-hmm. We said we'd be doing sex education mm-hmm. in schools because, mm-hmm. you know, these things people should know from a young age when you're being violated. Because, you know, sometimes someone can be violated and they're not sure what's going on. Like yeah. For instance, like in a relationship, you'd assume that's your partner. Yeah. They can do what they want. But, you know, once yeah. consent is not involved, mm-hmm. then it is rape. Okay, yeah. so consent is a very big deal yes. when it comes to the sex education and what have you. I'd like to understand from you, um, the gaps, what is it that the police said exactly that was missing that they could not follow up on this case? Um, you know, they need DNA, they need evidence, they need, like, sometimes they ask for too much. For instance, what if your perpetrator used a condom or what if, you didn't go to hospital on time so they weren't able to get the samples of the DNA mm-hmm. or what if there was no one there or what if it was a stranger mm-hmm. you know so I think police and actually medics should all be schooled on how to deal with victims mm-hmm. yeah because it's very very important for them to know to do the right thing now that this incident has happened twice within s- such a short span of time and you hadn't even fully recovered from the trauma of the first time, what happened? What, what was the side effect of this happening to you a second time? Well, I got suicidal, but thank God it wasn't successful. Mm-hmm. So you actually um, attempted suicide? A couple of times. Oh, no, no, but no, I'm no. okay. I mean, life mm-hmm. moves on. Mm-hmm. Um, depression, PTSD, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, guilt, mm-hmm. victim blaming. You know when someone victimizes you, mm-hmm. to some extent it goes to your head. So you yeah. start telling yourself, maybe if I wasn't there on that day, it wouldn't have happened. Maybe if I wasn't friends with these people and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it actually alters a lot of things. Even school, I had to take a break from school. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm still in school with the same people who did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not expelled or anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot to take in. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry you had to go through that. I'd like to understand, um, did you have to make any changes with your friends and the lifestyle after this particular incident happened? Do you still party? Do you even still have the courage to still go out and party and mingle with men? How do you even view men now? Um, One thing first, I don't generalize Mm -hmm. because that would be wrong for me to just say because it happened to me, all men are like that. No, Mm -hmm. but I am more cautious. You Mm -hmm. know, like even people who have known for long, now I still put question marks like what if, what if. Because mm-hmm. if that can happen with someone who I've actually known, mm-hmm. then who knows. Yes, I, I still do party once in a while, but 
I mean, it's nothing serious. Um, relating with people, yes, a couple of people I don't talk to anymore because some of them are related or have relations with the mm. uh, perpetrators. Because yeah. like I told you, I, I, people, when people opened up, like I exposed like more than 300 people. Mm -hmm. So, and I was putting out names. I wasn't blurring out. If mm -hmm. you've been called out, I don't care whether you've been friends or what. Mm -hmm. I was putting out. So you'd find people who know them or associate mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. cut themselves off. Mm -hmm. The others who I had to cut off from them because the fact that I associate with a rapist then they, they there's a problem, you know? Okay, so when, 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 when people started coming out and naming the perpetrators of this, uh, of this cr uh, crime to other people as well, did you receive any threats or any backlash from people trying to sue you and what have you, or, defamate, or defamatory kind of threats? What happened and how did you deal with that? It was insane. Mm -hmm. I got so many threats. Mm -hmm. I had even people showing up to my house. I had to move. Mm -hmm. So um, they just tell me, we know where you stay, we'll find you and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I don't take everything to heart. Mm -hmm. If you're going to come and start telling me that oh why did you expose me and whatnot if at all you did something if if i did something wrong or if i defamed you mm -hmm. then take the right action mm -hmm. go to court file a case and sue me mm -hmm. but until today i haven't been sued because mm -hmm. i'm a hundred percent sure every single story i shared mm -hmm. was true okay so let me ask you as we wind up this particular segment what message do you have for the men out there before i ask you about the message that you have for the ladies because i know that one is going to be a bit weighty so let's start with the men first actually i think i'll uh give it to both ladies and men mm -hmm. because even women rape men yes yeah yes. it's not just men who rape women mm -hmm. I f the thing is i'm not going to tell anyone don't drink don't smoke mm -hmm. don't dress indecently don't walk at night mm -hmm. you don't do all those things mm -hmm. no i'm just going to tell people don't rape it's that simple yes because if i'm going to start telling people to avoid certain situations then i'll tell people then don't leave at all yeah because how, how do you explain a kid who's two months being raped was yeah. the rapist attracted to the diaper yeah or, yeah you know yeah so i just tell people don't rape don't rip. It's, don't it has rip. nothing to do with the victim no, or what she's wearing or what, mm -hmm. what, or what have you or the circumstances that are there. No. Thank you so much, Elsie, for sharing your story with us. It's about, this, uh, it's about time we conclude this segment. I do wish you the best in all your journey. Ume okay. Bakisha, how many years to One. finish? One. One year. So you're almost out here in the world. Yes. Now that you're doing it, you want to be a diplomat? Yes, actually, you're right. That's uh -huh. my concentration. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Do you have any particular targets? Any countries? Any? I just want to. Be, I just want to present Kenya uh -huh. wherever. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh -huh. Yes. Who do you look up to? Who inspires you? That's a tough question. Uh -huh. <laughs> but if I had to pick one person, uh -huh. I think I'd say my father. Your father. Yes. All right. All right. Did this affect your relationship with your dad in any way? By the way, he was very sympathetic. Like now, he's very very protective, uh -huh. which is a good thing. Uh -huh. I mean, I wouldn't. I, w I can't deny that that's what a parent is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to some extent, it brought us closer. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So one more time, can you make sure you tell the fans at home where they can find your groups, yes. your pages, if they need the help and what have you? Well, um, on Instagram, I'm called self Medist African. So yes. And I have a page also for uh, the acti w my work as an activist. It's called the bold and the selfless. So mm -hmm. you can just DM me and I'll add you to the group if, you, if you're a victim or you just want to support us. All right. Thank you so much, Elsie Akoth, for coming to studio today. Don't rip. And I will leave it there. Thank you.